As swathes of the public sector go on strike this winter, the Tories are relying on a few central sound bites to explain why they can't give in to union demands. But I wasn't convinced those arguments stack up to scrutiny, and they mainly concern economics, so I called upon Jonathan Portez to fact check them. Now, Jonathan is a pretty big deal in the field. He served as chief economist at the Department for Work and Pensions from 2002 to 2008, and then was chief economist at the Cabinet Office from 2008 to 2011. He's now a professor in economic and public policy at King's College London. As I say, lots of credentials there. This is the first Tory claim I asked Jonathan to fact check. It's from James Cleverly, the Foreign Secretary. He's speaking about nurses' pay. It clues in the name. It's independent and it reviews pay awards but then, for those bodies. They're not the ones bodies. who control the purse strings. They're not the ones who make the decision. It's it's a, a recommendation they make. It's up to the government. It is a recommendation. Re- it's a recommendation and, and a recommendation. Decision. It's a recommendation and a recommendation that we have um, uh, agreed to implement. But it, it just doesn't seem that there's any way to resolve this. Then, if, if the government is saying we are simply not going to move from what the independent pay review body says. We are not willing to negotiate at all with the nurses about, about what they believe. Sorry, this question is going around in circles. The well, point is, is I, don't, I feel the like point I'm is, not getting a straight answer. No, I'm <laughs> sorry, you're not getting an answer you like, no, but that's I, different. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just giving you a straight answer. I'm struggling to understand why. A straight, the independent pay how, review how bodies... How do we resolve it? The independent pay review bodies were created to resolve differences between uh, the, uh, uh, the the bodies that are seeking uh, pay, whether they be in the health profession, teaching profession, other professions, and the government that hold the purse strings. They are the adjudicator. They were created. They are independent of government. They are staffed by experts. That is why they exist. Mm-hmm. They make recommendations. And in this instance, the government has accepted the recommendation fully. That was James Cleverly using a line we'll, we have heard a lot over the past days and we will hear a lot over the next few days, I am sure. Um, Jonathan Portez, I want to know your verdict. He's saying this is what the independent pay review body has said. They're independent. We accept what they're saying. The union should accept what they're saying. Everyone should accept what they're saying. W- what do you make of that particular claim? Well, there are two points about this. The first is that, as was clear from that discussion, the pay review bodies only make a recommendation. It's the right of either side to reject that recommendation and seek to, uh, to, to get a different outcome. And in fact, quite recently, in fact, when Jeremy Hunt was health secretary, the government simply ignored what the independent pay review body said indeed about NHS pay um, and imposed a significantly lower increase. Um, so the government has never taken the view that this is a binding recommendation on either side. Um, and indeed has in the past um, not followed the recommendation. So the precedent here is is quite clear. It's a recommendation and either side is free to reject it and to seek to to come to a different outcome. Um, The second point is that um, the pay review bodies are independent and they do, I think, do an excellent job of uh, 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 within the parameters they're set of setting out sensible uh, um, you know, a sensible approach to pay, but they do have to take those parameters as given. And in this case, the government very made very clear um, broadly what the overall envelope was. They weren't asking for the pay reviews body on how pay reviews body view on how much money overall should go into the settlement or into the NHS as a whole. They were taking that as given. So obviously, they were constrained to a significant extent. And of course, if you actually read the pay review body's recommendation, um, as I have, um, you'll see that they're quite clear that there are significant recruitment and retention difficulties um, in uh, the NHS and in particular in the nursing part of the NHS. And had they been given by government a remit which allowed them to make a recommendation which went some way towards addressing those staffing difficulties by increasing pay, no doubt they would have. They weren't in a position to be able to do that. So this is simply a, a, a smokescreen, I'm afraid. What's the point in an independent pay review body if they don't get to decide the budget? Because, I mean, it, when you're asking for, a, for an increase in, in your wages, I mean, essentially, when it comes to a public sector organisation, probably different in the private sector, but in the public sector, you're essentially saying, government, you need to fund the NHS more because the nurses aren't going on strike because they want to divert money away from um, capital spending and building hospitals to their wages. They want the budget for the NHS increase. So the, is the, the pay body issue just a complete red herring? 
I think it is in this case. I don't. I do think, in general, the payroll review bodies do serve a number of very useful purposes. One of those useful purposes, however, as you say, is not setting the overall budget. Um, but they can. They compile a lot of evidence on what is needed to recruit and retain. They make important recommendations about what the structure should be, about progression. Um, you know, about the differentials between different bits of the, the salary structure. There's all sorts of important really important technical work that helps uh, the public sector run better. But ultimately, if the government isn't giving enough money, um, then there's nothing much they can do about that. So in this particular context, um, you know, they are, they are not the right body to say whether um, the government should be giving a significant mo amount more money in order to fi fund nurses pay. That's not their job. They do have an important job, and I do think they are very useful, but that is not the job. Let's move on to a different claim now. This is Rishi Sunak speaking about why he doesn't think um, public sector workers should get pay rises in line with inflation. The government is always going to try and act fairly and reasonably, and that's why we accepted in full the recommendations of the independent bodies that advise a government on the appropriate levels of pay in the public sector. But what I'm not going to do is ask ordinary families up and down the country to pay an extra £1,000 a year to meet the pay demands of the union bosses. That wouldn't be right and it wouldn't be fair. So government ministers have been clear, we've heard it again from many of them, um, that if uh, public sector unions were to get pay rises in line with inflation, it would cost every household in Britain a thousand pounds. How would you respond to to that, Jonathan? Well, they seem to have just made this number up, I'm afraid. Um, and I am 90% sure that in due course, the independent UK stats authority will say that the, the basis for this calculation is very, very dodgy at best, um, as they did uh, um, um, just a day or two ago about another claim made by uh, um, by, by ministers. Um, uh, I think the, 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 the simplest way of looking at this is to say, well, look, the overall public sector pay bill is about £230 billion. So a 10% pay rise is probably about £23 billion. Um, and, um, but, of course, um, the government has already made uh, pay offers, um, which are, depending on which bit of the public sector you look at, two, three, five percent or whatever. Um, so the cost of meeting the pay demands would probably be in somewhere in the region of, of 14 billion. Now that adds up in arithmetic terms to roughly 500 per pounds per household. But that also ignores the fact that, of course, the public sector pay workers if they got that right, the money wouldn't go straight in their pay packets because they pay tax on that, and that goes straight back to the government. Um, so depending on you, how you calculate it, um, a better approximation is probably that uh, it would be perhaps three or four hundred pounds per household would be the cost of giving um, an inflation-linked pay rise to uh, all public sector pay workers um, this year. Now, I mean, I think... We do have to recognize, you know, and I'll be going back to my sort of orthodox economist hat on this, um, that, you know, uh, uh, there are limited resources, there are constraints um, in, you know, we can borrow, and you can argue about exactly how much we borrow in a given year, but over the longer term, more pay for public sector pay work, uh, for, for public sector workers does mean um, more tax for everybody. There is no getting around that in the medium to long run. Um, I think uh, that actually, given the pressures on public services over the medium to long term, we are going to need to have to pay more tax. Um, and I do think politicians ought to be upfront about that. Um, but the thousand pound figure is, is really an invention. Um, and uh, I, you know, when, when the Treasury, um, in response to questions, tried to come up with a, a way of justifying it, um, it was absolutely clear to everybody who saw that, that, that they um, were trying to come up with a sort of ex post rationalization for a number that ministers had simply made up. And it seems to me there's also, you know, a, another problem here. So even if we take your number, £300, you're suggesting could, could be what it costs sort of per household, the tax system is supposed to be progressive, right? So it shouldn't be the case that if you increase public spending um, and then divide it by the number of households, we all end up paying 300 quid. What it should be is that rich households are paying a thousand quid extra and poor households are paying potentially nothing extra and then people in the middle are paying 200 pounds or something like that, right? 
Yes, you're right. Uh, um, obviously, this is that would uh, be just an average, and richer pe- in a progressive system, richer people would pay more, and poorer people would pay less. Um, that said, um, I do think you know the the fact is that um, better public services do mean we, in the long run, we will all have to pay somewhat more tax. With those of us who can pay more, paying somewhat more, and those paying somewhat less, but there is going to be a cost. Let's look at one more Tory claim about these strikes. This is Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor. We have to be very careful. We recognise the position the unions hold is completely sincere um, because of the challenge of 11% inflation. On the other hand, we also have a sincerely held position, which is that we don't want to do anything that would lock in that high inflation rate for a long time to come. So the right answer in a situation like this is to follow an independent process where someone independent looks at the union's position, looks at the government's position, and comes to a fair compromise. And that's what we think should happen. And that's why we are supporting the independent pay review body processes. So that was Jeremy Hunt saying that the government have to follow the independent pay review body's recommendations, which we've we've talked about before. Otherwise, um, it could lock in high levels of inflation. So he's saying if they negotiate with the unions, if they uh, concede to the unions that pay should increase by more than, say, the sort of 3 to 4 to 5% that they seem to be offering um, the public sector unions, then that could lock in runaway inflation. I mean, how would you respond to that? Well, it's not in principle a crazy worry um, that if you gave <clears throat> very significant increases at or above inflation, um, that you would be Um, raising um, wage expectations across the whole economy. It is true that part of this inflation is, most of this inflation is driven by energy prices, which just means that we as a country are poorer. And that means that on average, we have to accept that real wages will fall for for most of us. Um, But the fact is, of course, that actually at the moment, wage increases in the private sector are running at six or six and a half percent on average. Um, whereas average earnings in the public sector are only going up by about 2.5%. So to the extent that inflation is being driven by wages, and there's really very little evidence of that at all across the board with even private sector wages so far behind inflation, um, they certainly aren't being driven by public sector wages. And it it really um, just doesn't make any sense from just as a basic common sense proposition to suggest that if you um, brought the rate of increase in the public sector somewhat closer to that that people in the private sector are already getting, that that would somehow embed inflationary pressures or inflationary expectations in the economy. It simply doesn't add up. On the contrary, what we are seeing is that people are leaving the public sector. The NHS is losing staff. Um, We've seen a sharp fall in the number of applications for teacher training and so on because public sector wages are falling behind private sector wages for people um, you know, with, with similar sort of skills or qualifications or so on. So I really don't think that as an argument in current conditions makes any sense at all from an economic perspective. And is there another problem with it that this is the public sector, right? So my understanding is one of the reasons why a wage price spiral happens is because if people's wages go up, that means the costs of goods and services go up because you know labour is a factor of production. In the NHS, like if we start paying nurses more, that's not going to mean that we all have to pay more for for operations or whatever, because this is funded by taxation. It's not funded out of our pockets on a day to day basis. Is there is there anything to that? So in the public sector, the way that mechanism would work is if the public sector was paying, giving increases significantly above the private sector and in a tight labor market was attracting people who would otherwise have gone into private sector jobs to come into the public sector for the better pay then you could see that would drive up wage inflation in the private sector and hence inflation across the board, right? But that's not what's happening at the moment. It's quite the reverse is what's happening. People are leaving the public sector because they get better rates in the private sector. So there is a, it's not theoretically impossible. It's just not remotely what's happening at the moment or what would be likely to happen if the government gave um, somewhat better offers to people in the public sector. (laughs) 